Welcome to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne Kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne will teach you how to do this through building high self esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness, as well as other useful free gifts for you. In this episode of Claim Your Excellent Life, we're going to talk about never allowing anyone to take your own authority away from you. This is such an important teaching that I received from my father, who was a dentist, self-employed, who believed that as a person you have the right to choose with whom you work, who you listen to, and who you do not. And I'm bringing this up because I had two situations this week that allowed me to put this very important advice for my teenage years into operation. The first was a home care situation that I had working with an elderly woman who once ran the human resources department for four of the Connecticut University schools. It was a fairly high powered job. She had a lot of responsibility and she was used to doing things her way and getting her own way. The only problem is now she's 88 years old cannot take care of herself, needs someone to help her out, and really resents it. She's very abusive to the caregivers. In fact, the woman who trained me is probably one of the best certified nursing assistants people I've ever seen work. Really thorough, knows how to do her job, and even she was put into a state of anger so bad that her chronic illness symptoms came back within a day or so. I was happily fired from that job on my birthday, September 24th, because, well, there was nothing that I could do to please her. All she wanted to do was complain, yell, and talk about me to all of her family members and friends behind my back, which wasn't really behind my back because of her situation I had to be within close proximity of her so that I could hear her if she needed my assistance. Not to mention that she wasn't a very communicative person. The second situation that I had had to do with my new student advisor at the University of the Rockies where I'm doing a master's degree program online in medical sociology. My hope is to be able to help medical practitioners learn how to speak more humanely and more positively with those patients who are going through some really difficult health issues, especially those who may be terminal. From my perspective, no doctor is a god or a goddess. So they need to temper how they talk to their patients because I know that once that white coat is on them, they have prestige authority, and as such, anything they say goes directly into the subconscious mind of their patient, and that patient may take that as their reality. Very, very important stuff. Well, anyway, getting back to the situation of the universe of the Rockies, I was doing my reading for this week in this course that I'm doing in sociological epidemiology, which is a really difficult course when you start learning about all these ratios of different groups with illness and not illness and the rest of it. My brain doesn't work in fractions and percentages and certainly not algebraic type equations. So I was thinking about dropping the course, feeling I was over my head. And these courses only last six weeks, so if you're late on an assignment, or if you don't understand something and the professor doesn't get back to you super timely, it's going to be really, really hard to catch up. Well, I called my student advisor. She's a new student advisor. 
And boy, did this woman have attitude. I'm explaining the situation. I did actually post my response in a timely fashion, but unfortunately the internet was not so good in the house that I was living in with that disruptive, angry client of mine. So the thing didn't post. I can't blame the teacher for not seeing something that technology got in the way of making happen. But at the same time, he downgraded me because I hadn't responded to him, even though I did, <laughs> because he couldn't see it. And I had asked a question regarding the first types of ratios, shall we say, of populations that I just really didn't understand and because he didn't get it. I had to repost it and I still haven't gotten the answer to that question and there's going to be a lot more. So I was really quite upset about the whole thing. Well, this particular student advisor didn't really appreciate my personality, my upsetness. She told me that I had posted on the 25th, which was the second week, which meant that if I dropped the course, I'd be responsible for paying out of my own money for the cost of half that course, which is over $1,000, just the half. And I honestly don't have that right now. And the other thing was that she just didn't know how to acknowledge the fact that technology was the issue, not me not doing the work. And she just got me more and more frustrated with her inability to hear and put content into context appropriately. So I fired her. I was very happy to call the, uh, the student advising number and get the student advisor manager on the line. And I told her what had happened and that I did not want to work with this lady. I didn't want to have her do anything for me. I did not want to talk to her again. She was fired and to find someone who's down to earth and helpful and can understand when someone's under stress and needs a caring, compassionate mind, not an overly assertive, angry, non-listening response because she has 20 years in the business but still can't listen to her students, apparently. And I want you to know that this person not only was she able to understand what I was saying, she didn't get upset when I cut her off to make my points, and inside of 10 minutes, she had me set up with a brand new advisor. Haven't talked to that one yet. And she gave me the information I needed so that I could feel comfortable perhaps going forward in the class and making it work by knowing exactly what I needed to write in a direct email to the professor to let him know what had happened and what my concerns were. See, if the other advisor was capable of doing that, maybe she would have worked out, but she didn't know how to do that. She just said to tell the instructor. When am I supposed to tell the instructor? Well, I got about six different points that I was able to explain, and she said she had really good results with professors, sometimes expanding out the amount of time so that they can help the student a little more closely and not be downgraded if the papers are turned in a little late because they're trying to understand the concepts that they need help with. <laughs> it makes logical sense, right? So I want you to understand that no does not need to be no, that there's always a person above the person who thinks they have all the authority in the world to tell you what you are going to do. Go access them and ask the questions that you need to ask until you get an answer that works for you. I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to do okay in this class. I just did the second week assignments, well, at least the two that are due tonight. Did them today, it wasn't that big an issue. I think the paper for this weekend will be okay. I'm just really kind of concerned about the final project. That's my real big deal because I'm gonna probably have to structure some kind of research study around tuberculosis since that's the illness that I chose, seeing that's the number one killer disease today. More than AIDS and car accidents combined, if you could believe it. And that's a fact, and that was from news yesterday in terms of the um, world medical body wanting to finally take care of it once and for all. 
having had a cure for it since the 1950s, and yet it's still a major killer. Go figure. Seemed like a topical subject for today. In any case, what I want you to understand is that you need to be in control of your life, especially if you're an adult. You know, I just turned 57 years old. I don't need someone to treat me like a child. I do not need someone talking down to me, and I do not need someone adding insult to injury. I really don't. So, my guess is that you feel the same when you get upset, frustrated, aggravated, and feel defeated by situations in your life, and you're trying to figure out the best way to deal with them. This is the way to deal with them. Hold on to your authority and get done what you need to get done. And if you need to go over somebody's head, go over their head. And if you have to go over someone else's head on the next level, do that as well. You do it until you get your own situation taken care of to the best of your ability. Because that's you owning yourself and owning your own authority. As always, I thank you for spending your time with me. Till next time. If you have enjoyed Claim Your Excellent Life, we'd really appreciate it if you go over to iTunes and give it a five-star review. If you have found Claim Your Excellent Life to be helpful to you, and maybe even life-altering with the information that we have shared here, and to allow us to continue this work, which we really do enjoy doing for you, you can sponsor us at patreon.com. That's spelled P as in Paul, A T. R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com. Again, that's P as in Paul, A-T as in Tom, R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com. Where there's a few different levels of sponsorship that you can choose from to help us to continue doing this work. We thank you for any assistance that you are able to give us. Thank you for listening to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne Kellner-Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne teaches you how to do this through building high self-esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques self-esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness as well as other useful free gifts for you.